In the next 10 minutes or less, I'm going to share with you the biggest lessons that I have learned in my 20 plus years in the audio world. And the last lesson is super important. So make sure you stick around. Hi, I'm Jay. I'm a mixing and mastering engineer. And here on this channel, I cover the audio side of DaVinci Resolve except for this week. We're gonna go a little bit more high level and I'm gonna share with you some of the biggest things that I have learned over my entire career, both in music and in video. So let's put 10 minutes on the clock and get started. My first tip is really simple. Always be working with a clean workspace. And I'm not talking about your editing desk or your studio, although that does help as well. I'm talking about your editing software. See, when I first started making music and when I first started making videos, I was not organized at all. I would throw everything onto my timeline and I would just start editing. And then if things didn't fit, I would delete them. And it was a big, just mess. I can't even tell you how many times I've accidentally deleted a piece of dialogue or a piece of music or a really important sound effect because I just wasn't organized. So don't make the same mistake that I did. Whenever you start a new project, take the time to create the tracks you're going to need, label them, color code them. That way, when you start bringing in your media, you know exactly what goes where. And if you need more tracks later, don't just stick them down at the bottom of your timeline, create them and put them where they're supposed to be and label them and color code them. The more organized you are, the more efficient you are. That's Basically, that's that's the tip right there. Tip number two, dialogue is king. Let me explain. When I first started editing videos, I always assumed that the dialogue always needed to be front and center and it needed to be the clearest, most easily heard thing in the mix. And because of that, some of my other mixes actually sounded really amateur. And this is because I wasn't taking into account where the dialogue actually needed to sit in the mix. Yes, in a YouTube video like this one, or in a vlog or something like that, the dialogue should be front and center because most of the time you're talking directly to the camera. But in an action scene or in a scene where there's lots of outside noises and loud things going around you, you don't want your dialogue to be front and center. You want it to be sitting back in the mix because otherwise you're breaking the immersion of the video. So the tip is to always think about where the dialogue would be sitting in the mix and mix everything else accordingly. Doing this is going to separate your mixes apart from amateur mixes. Tip number three, reach for the fader first. This is another thing that I learned the hard way. I tend to overthink and overcomplicate things. So if something isn't sitting right in the mix, and this happened mostly with music, but if something wasn't sitting right in the mix, I would always reach for oh, EQ. Maybe I need to boost the presence a little bit in the dialogue or cut something in the music. And I would always be looking for these creative ways to make everything fit in the mix. When a lot of the times, all I needed to do was reach for the fader and turn something up or down a little bit, and that fixed the problem. It's basically Occam's razor. The simplest solution is often the correct solution. So don't automatically reach for EQ if something isn't fitting in the mix. Don't automatically assume you need to add reverb to something because it's not fitting in the mix. Sometimes all you need to do is grab a fader. Tip number four is to use new tools, but master the old ones. This one might get me into a little bit of trouble. This is a tale as old as time. Every time new technology comes out that is meant to help you be more efficient or get things done faster, there are old school purists who are going to claim that the new technology is cheating. When audio plugins first became a thing, all the people who had been using hardware compressors and hardware EQs claimed that these new software-based EQs and compressors was cheating. And now we've got AI powered tools that are going to boost your efficiency. And some of them are EQs or compressors or delays or whatever, but they've got this AI behind them helping you be more efficient and get the result that you want faster. But you've got all these old school people who've been using non AI powered plugins saying that using AI is cheating. It's not cheating. Embrace it, embrace the new technology, embrace the new tools, because when it comes down to it, your audience doesn't care how you got to the result you got, 
They care about the result. They care that it sounds good. They don't care how you got there. For example, let's take a look at today's sponsor, Artlist, who's been my go-to place for music and sound effects and stock footage and templates and effects and all kinds of stuff for years now, but they recently released their AI image to video and now they've got a major update with VO3, which is text to video and that video can have embedded sound. Which means instead of having to find a piece of stock footage, then bringing it into my timeline, then finding a whole bunch of sound effects to create the sound design for that piece of footage, I can simply go into Artlist, type in the type of clip that I need and what I need the sound to be, and it will generate that image with the sound that I need. It's amazing, and it saves me hours of busy work. But because I do know how to do sound design the old fashioned way, I can still go to Artlist and download some sound effects or some music, add them to that soundscape that was generated by VO3 and really round out the mix. So like I said before, use new technology, but master the old way. Artlist will be linked below this video, and if you sign up using that link, you'll actually get two free months on top of an annual subscription. So go do that. Tip number five might be one of my favorites, and it's that silence is a sound effect. See, when I first started mixing, especially in video, I was terrified of dead air. So no matter what I was doing, no matter what kind of video I was creating, I always had music in the background. I always had sound effects. I never had any dead air whatsoever. And the problem with that is I missed out on a lot of opportunities to create bigger impact in my videos. Because silence can be used to build tension. It can be used to emphasize something that somebody is saying. I mean, if you were watching a video where there was background music going on in the background, and then all of a sudden that background music stopped, you're going to pay attention to what the person on the screen is saying next. So in your next video, really pay attention to what's going on in the video and where you can use silence to build tension or make what you're saying on camera more impactful. It's really going to go a long ways in helping your audience to keep watching your video and to really pay attention to what's going on. Tip number six is to listen with a purpose. And this is something that took me way too long to learn, and I don't know why, looking back on it, it seems so obvious. Let me explain. When I first started making videos and I would go into the sound design and audio mixing portion of making that video, that's what I did. I just dove into the mix and started mixing until I thought it sounded good. The problem was when I went and watched the video on my phone or on the TV, the audio mix did not translate well at all to those other environments. And the reason why is because I didn't take the time to learn what a good mix should sound like in my mixing environment. So now what I do, and yes, this does come across to other people as me just being lazy or procrastinating doing work, but what I do is I will constantly have a show or a movie or YouTube videos playing in the background while I'm working, or I will actively actually watch the movie or the show or the YouTube video in my mixing environment, through my mixing speakers. That way I can get an idea of what a good mix should sound like in my mixing environment. And then when I can make my mixes sound like those mixes, they translate better to phone and to TV. Basically what you're doing is you're training your ears so you're not mixing aimlessly and hoping for the best when you go to watch your video on another device. My last tip and most important tip, if you take nothing else away from this video, take this away, mix with your ears, not your eyes. If you look at any piece of editing software, you're going to find meters all over the place. You're going to find waveforms inside of plugins, just all sorts of stuff that is visually showing you what is happening with your audio. And I'm telling you right now, they're all lying to you. Meters and waveforms can tell you how loud something is, but they can't tell you if your audio sounds good. They can't tell you if your mix is right. Your job 
when mixing is to create a feeling. So close your eyes, listen to your mix. If it sounds right, then it is right. Really quick funny story slash lesson. Not too long ago, I spent hours hunting down a hum in my mix. I could not get rid of it no matter what. I was using plugins and all sorts of stuff. I could not get rid of it at all. It turns out it was a faulty headphone jack. So the lesson and the tip, always check your gear. 